pretty damn small. I paid $49 for this. It's a better work, and it better look good. Mm. What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chris's Custom Collectibles and today we are going to be pimping out the Millennium Falcon from Solo. This is the Force Link 2.0 version. So as you guys know, the Millennium Falcon looks quite different in the trailers that we've seen of Solo so far and most notably it's because of this cargo hold area at the front but it's acting as a missile with this toy but we're not going to worry about that. This is going to be a stationary prop. This is going to be a stationary display. You know, this will be optional. You do press a button on the side here, I think, for it to dislodge. You know what, actually, probably just open it up. God damn it. It's small. I paid $49 for this. It's a better work. It's better look good. Okay, so where's the front? Alright, so there's the front. Yep. Where'd you go? Out your pot. Okay. Uh, that's the bottom. Alright, cool. So there you go. This is how the Millennium Falcon looks in Solo from what we've seen. And obviously it makes sense, you know, this is the backstory. So we're going to have a different looking Millennium Falcon. So the idea today is to make a little display, like a little corner piece or something you can even hang on your wall with a rock formation background as if it's zooming straight past the rocks. So quickly looking at this now, I can see we've got to unscrew all the pieces here, split it in half. I do want to put a LED strip across the back here that will feed into the main body of the Falcon, have a wire that is mounted inside, say, an aluminium pole, which is going to be then mounted on the rock formation and have it almost flying on an angular path like that. Now from looking at this, it looks like these side strips here of the ship do come out. So I actually am going to spray paint them a much more darker grey because from what I've seen it is a much more darker grey on the screen used version of the Falcon. After that we're going to be experimenting with some black and brown shoe polish, also some Model Masters black washers just to really get some detail in there. I'm fully aware that the Falcon isn't overly weathered in Solo, but come on guys, this is a custom collectible. We've really got to weather this baby. I guess you could say we're going to kind of make it our own. There's not a lot of steps involved, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be an amazing display piece in the end. So first step is we're going to unscrew this whole piece, and then I'm going to remove the side panels here, spray them with a flat grey primer. May the force be with us, geeks. With that being said, let's get to it. Alright geeks, now that those side panels are drying, it's time to move on to the overall weathering of the body of the Falcon itself. Now if you're wondering why the actual uh, attachment here looks a little different, it's because I've gone ahead and experimented with how I want this piece to look. So it pops out just like so. So all I did was coat it with some black shoe polish, wiped away the excess and then went over it with a scour sponge that has been soaked in some boiling hot water just to highlight all the hard edges of the body itself. So we're going to repeat this stage throughout the whole Falcon.
Okay, next up, I'm just getting some brown shoe polish and just kind of buffing it in to where the exhaust fans are, like as if it's a trail that's soiled onto the back of the Falcon itself. Alright geeks, now that I'm very happy with how the weathering looks on the Falcon, it's time to move on to the LED strip that is going to be placed on the back of the Falcon to emulate the uh, thrust blasters. So, this is just an LED strip. It comes with a kit that I got from Bunnings Warehouse. I think it comes with about four of these strips. We only need one. We're going to be utilizing the uh, adhesive backing and just stick it onto the back where the blasters are. So I did have to dremel in some notches on the sides of the Falcon on the blasters because it needs to slot in place and then stick to the back. And then we'll have the wiring inside that'll feed out an aluminium tube and out the back of the base itself. Now, unfortunately, we've got these insignias here, but we're gonna dull that back with a blue translucent spray. So it's not gonna cover up the LED strip altogether and inhibit the light shining through. But more or less, it's just going to take away from seeing these eyesores here because unfortunately if we try and remove the white area, we are going to remove some of the electronics in the process. So keep in mind, this is going to be at the back of the Falcon. It's just to give that lighting emulation like it's blasting along the side of a planet. So we're going to give this a nice solid spray, let it dry. I'm going to mount it on the back of the Falcon and start to wire it up and then we can move on to the base. Okay, so as you guys see right here, this is the kit that comes with the LED strip and I'm just going to switch it on like so. Perfect. Looks like thrust boosters, individual ones, so it'll do fine for the back of the Falcon. Like I said, we're going to be utilizing the adhesive backing here and we're going to be popping it onto the back here and slotting the excess inside here and then the wire will be coming out of this aluminium pole. Now I just used a Dremel, angled it and Dremeled in to the body itself and just went back and forth until the pole slotted in there perfectly and held it in place. So if you can imagine, it's going to be on a wall mount, so it's going to be a rock formation wall mount. So now I'm going to mount the strip on the back, I'm going to do a test just to make sure everything works and it's all self-contained and then we can move on to the base. Alright geeks, it's time to move on to the base slash wall mount. So like I said, we're going for a rock formation. So I've got here two sheets of styrofoam. One is thicker than the other because I think this thickness here is going to be just perfect for when we carve out the whole rock formation thing. Now I've also got a small sheet of MDF that I'm actually going to be adhering to the back just for a bit of structure and also where we are going to hang the wall mount itself and of course for the pole to come through that is going to be holding the Falcon in place. So the first step is we have to adhere all these layers together, much like a layer cake but we're just going to be using the Selly's Quick Grip Contact Adhesive. So if you are using contact adhesive, you know how it goes guys, you've got to cover both surfaces, let them become tack dry and then stick them together. I'm actually going to leave this overnight so it reaches maximum hold. Then after that I'm going to draw out on the foam how I want the rock grooves to look, attack it with an angle grinder, some sandpaper, I'm then going to seal it up with some resin and it'll give it a nice rocky look. Okay, so you guys know how I have the saying, if you're not failing, you're not doing it right. Clear and perfect example. So I let the wall mount base sit overnight and funnily enough, the contact adhesive pretty much completely ate away at the foam. So there is next to no structure left in this piece. It's just very brittle. So obviously we cannot use this, even though it does look like a cool rock formation, it still has no structure to it anymore. So. We have an alternative. I had to go back to Spotlight, had to get the same pieces of foam and the same piece of MDF, but for now, 
we're just gonna use good old fashioned PVA glue and I should have done that in the first place. The only reason I use contact adhesive on foam is because, well, I've never used contact adhesive on foam before. I didn't know it would be that corrosive towards the foam because this stuff can be quite brittle. If you guys have used spray paint or certain spray paints on foam before, it just eats it away like half of Harvey Dent's face in acid. Ooh, burn. All right, let's get back to it. <laughs> Okay, so I've got my rock formation all drawn out how I want it to go. This piece here is going to be like a deep cavernous part and I want all the other bits kind of sticking out. So the lines here are the lines that are going to be cut with the angle grinder. Now I'm probably not just going to be using the angle grinder all together. I'm also probably going to be going in with a bullet head point on the Dremel. Then once that's done, I'm going to sand it down, just shape all the rock formation pieces and then we're going to go in with some resin and coat the entire piece with resin to kind of seal it up and give it a nice texture. Alright geeks, so I'm very happy with how the rock formation is looking at the moment. The next step is to seal this entire piece in with some supercast resin. We've got the supercast resin from Barnes, part A, part B, mix ratio is 100 to 100. So I've just got a disposable brush that we're just going to brush the entire surface with, including the sides. It's probably going to bubble in some areas and I want that. I kind of want that otherworldly kind of rock looking formation, almost alien-like. Once that's dry, we can then go on to painting this piece and weathering it. I'll probably add some bits of flocking. Okay, so the first step in achieving the desired rock formation coloring look is we're gonna go over the whole area with a matte black. Now I'm just using student acrylics for this one. Now you're probably wondering why I'm not just spraying it with a matte black. That's because even though it's sealed up with resin, we still run the risk of the thinners in the spray paint eating away at the foam or any exposed areas of foam or getting in any areas of foam and affecting the structural integrity of the piece itself. Now, the reason why the primer didn't break down the foam is there aren't any thinners in the primer. It's not an actual paint per se. So that's why it left the foam intact. So after we completely cover this whole area, we're then gonna start the dry brushing effect. Now I want this looking like sort of a brown, barren kind of rock desert formation. So I'm gonna start with a darker brown, build it up with a light brown. I'm then gonna go in with maybe some bits of moss and everything resting in this caved in area here. Maybe get some clear resin, drip it around certain areas like there's a bit of a waterfall or even some moisture coming out of the rock. Okay, next step is we're gonna dry brush some raw umber over the entire piece, excluding the sides here. I'm gonna keep these a nice museum black just so it looks like, you know, a museum piece. So I'm probably gonna have to repeat this coat about two or three times just to build up the proper color because we are going against the darkest color. So after three coats, I'm then probably gonna move on to a nice red oxide, maybe throw some yellows in there. And then also, I'm gonna get some dirt from the driveway. The return of the dirt from the driveway. So probably, again, in all the crevices and everything, just so it looks a lot more barren.
Okay, so the next step is to make this very dry, very matte looking and very barren. So we've got the base coat. The next step, we've got some dirt from the driveway. I'm gonna be using this matte seal. This is preserve it, so it's gonna almost act as an adhesive. We're gonna spray it down all over the whole face of the backdrop first, and then we're gonna pour the driveway dirt all over the face of the base. Hey, that rhymes. Then I'm gonna brush off the excess, see how it looks, assess what it needs, another coat, or I need to remove some parts of the dirt, and then we can go into little nitpicking details, like maybe some moss, or just little bits of vegetation growing in the cracks of the face itself. All right, Geek, so overall, I'm very happy with the progress of the wall mount base. So what I did is I actually sprinkled some more driveway dirt over all the grass flocking here just to kind of blend it back into the rock formation because it was too striking for my liking. It was far too much of a brighter green against a really dark shade of brown, black, and of course that raw umber. So the next step is I'm gonna be doing some resin work here to make as if like a tree cling kind of, there's a hole in the rock or there's moisture coming out of the rock formation itself and it's leaking down and coming down through these crevices here like a little natural waterfall. So for that, I'm just gonna be using Bee Queen, which is a clear casting resin, no tints required. So a mixed ratio is 100 to 100. I'm gonna first start in this area here, this area here, it's gonna be facing down and then I'm gonna tip it up and let it all just kind of naturally drain out like so. Alright geeks, now that I have the wall hanger mounted on the back of the base, it's time to bore a hole where I want the aluminium pole to be coming through with all the wiring that is going to be rigged into the Falcon and also holding the Falcon in place. So I'm just going to be using the bullet head on the Dremel. I've marked the exact area where I want it to be, where the Falcon will sit and be centered and be angled as well as if it's just zooming past the rock formation. I'm going to be drilling a tiny hole out the back on the MDF itself. I'm then going to feed the wire through for the LED strip. I'm going to rig everything on the inside of the Falcon, mount it in place, pop her on the wall and call it a day.
And there you have it, geeks. Just in time for the release of Solo, we have done our first Millennium Falcon custom collectible. I'm actually really happy with how this has turned out. And when it's in a low light, or in fact, if it's in a dark room, the blue light illuminates the wall beautifully. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. I hope you guys enjoy Solo this week. I'm going to be going to see it this weekend with two of my mates. Wherever you are in the world, have yourselves a cracker of a day. I hope you're well. Hope you're happy. Be merry, be silly, and until next time, geeks, please, always remember, cosplayers do it best.